turn the tide ahead of the midterm elections in November. Today, talking up his proposal to increase the minimum wage. It's one of the major policy pitches he laid out last night in the State of the Union address, part of a packed agenda aimed at rebuilding his political standing and reinvigorating the Democratic base. Let's talk about it with Carl Rove, former senior advisor and deputy chief of staff to President George W. Bush, also a Fox News contributor. Was this a speech that was less about the State of the Union and more about the state of Democratic reelection chances in November, Carl? Yeah, John, I think you're right. Uh, a lot of the speech was uh, old, old familiar themes. Uh, minimum wage, unemployment benefits, immigration, climate change. This was all designed to do two things. One is to give Democrats a series of talking points about what they were supposedly trying to achieve this year, and then to be able to blame the Republicans if they didn't get what they want. Uh, there was also more in the terms of words. He tried to stiffen the spine of Democrats with Obamacare by proclaiming its great success. He tried to add to the mem that Democrats have of war on women by saying uh, women are making less than men. Of course, he had no specific proposal about what he wanted to do. But again, he was just trying to add to the to the Democratic narrative of what they're all about. The new that was in the speech was relatively small and very unimpressive and probably mostly unachievable uh, except by executive action. But even then, like the My RIA, which is a some kind of new retirement device. Uh, the, the White House fact sheet says it's going to be a vehicle so people can invest in U.S. Treasuries and they can have a government guarantee on the value of their retirement account. I'm not certain how the Treasury Department can do that by executive order or by fiat without, without the United States Congress saying, yes, we will give you the ability to give a federal guarantee for this just like we do for bank accounts. I mean, I, I don't know exactly how you can do that. And a lot of the new was along those lines. Yeah, there, there was a question about that. There was also this moment when he talked about bypassing Congress. I want to play this for you and then uh, talk a little bit about it on the other side. But America does not stand still and neither will I. So wherever and whenever I can take steps without legislation to expand opportunity for more American families, that's what I'm going to do. I found it kind of odd there, Carl. He's talking about bypassing Congress to, to put programs or you might say laws into place. It wouldn't be an actual law without an act of Congress. But he's talking about by, bypassing Congress and Congress gives him an ovation. Well, the Democratic side of the House uh, uh, chamber rose. The Democratic senators and House members, President Rose. But there was nobody standing up on the right side of the House. Look, uh, I want to be precise about this. A president, regardless of party, does have executive authority. Sure. The question is, the, their executive orders, are they based in statute? That is to say, has the law said to the president, you have discretion to act in this instance? And, and uh, so the test of what the president's going to do in using his pen, as he so famously said yesterday, is whether or not the, the actions that he takes are, are statutorily based. And the problem with this president is he doesn't seem to care what the law has to say. There's no statutory authority for a president to exempt an entire class of people from immigration law enforcement. And yet he did it. There's no provision in the Affordable Care Act that gives him the ability to unilaterally suspend the employer mandate. But he did it. And so the, the, the real test is going to be, is the president going to take the authority that he has to temporarily take an action under statute that could be reversed by a future president? Or is he going to simply say, if Congress doesn't do what I want it to do, I don't care what the law says. I don't care what the statute says. I don't care if there's no power for me to do this. I'm going to do it and then dare somebody to take me to court and hope that my new appointees that I've jammed on and packed the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals uphold me and that the Supreme Court doesn't take the case. So we'll see how it plays out. I think, it, frankly, it's more um, bluffster and bluff than it is reality, but we'll see. Yeah, we already are, well, the president has already taken off from Andrews Air Force Base. He's hitting the road on one of these post-State of the Union speaking tours that, that every president does. But it's been pointed out, what's interesting about where he's not going uh, are the states that have Democratic senators facing re-election this year, uh, states in which, you know, Republican, well, Mitt Romney won the last time around. He's not going to places like that uh, to buck up those senators. Why? Well, they, they don't want him there. That's why. They don't. We saw it recently when Senator Kay Hangen of North Carolina 
made every effort. She looked like a contortionist making certain that she was not in the state when he came to North Carolina. But look, the problem is not just in red states. It's also in purple states. Remember, in 2010, the Republicans picked up Senate seats in states that Barack Obama won in 2008, two years previously. Wisconsin, his home state of Illinois, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Florida among them. So even, for example, he's going to go to Wisconsin. His approval numbers in Wisconsin are dreadful. And so we're, going to, we're likely to see that this president, like so many before him, in his second midterm election, is not going to be a welcome visitor to a lot of places in America for political campaigns. We are going to be talking next hour with Senator John Thune about some of the uh, electoral prospects for Democratic senators in some of these tough states. Carl Rove, thanks for giving us a preview. You bet. Thank you.